All right. Good evening, JT. How we doing? Oh um, man, living the dream, Dave. Every damn day. How about you? I'm doing. I'm. I'm. I, I, on my way there, hopefully. Um, so I, I guess I will introduce you, uh, JT Eberhart, the guy behind the Atheist Gamers. <laughs> and if you had, if you had had any other kind of introduction, you know, if you wanted to introduce yourself, <laughs> I mean, oh, I, you mentioned my blog. What would JT do? That's what keeps yeah, yeah. the lights. So if you listen to this, go click on my blog. You don't have to read anything. Just click there, so I make money. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll probably do that afterwards. It's it's good to you know it. It's good to be back, and uh, you know I, it's been a while since my last video, but I, I'm I'm glad to have you on. So the first question I have is kind of what's your what is your story? Like, did, did you grow up in a religious family? Um, you know, were your parents religious? Uh, when do you think you started to to become an atheist? Actually, I, I didn't grow up in a religious family. I grew up in a secular household. My father has a philosophy degree. And so I always got, he, and he, never, he was careful never to try and sway me each way. He would give me the arguments for both sides. Uh, and so I just kind of grew up not really having any idea of God. And I got proselytized to by two of my teachers in high school. And I actually wound up becoming Christian, which is really weird. Because you usually hear about people growing up in a religious household and then leaving it to become atheist. I was the other way. I grew up in an atheist household and became Christian. Uh, because youth, what can you do? Uh, <laughs> But then, ironically, I later had a job with the Secular Student Alliance as their first high school organizer, and I spent a lot of time calling high schools where teachers were proselytizing and saying, hey, that's against the law. You actually can't do that. You need to stop. So I like to think I made good on it eventually. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. I mean, I, it's, 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 very, it's very interesting that at one point in time, you know, and I, I, I go through this personally, like at one point in time, you could have, you know, you could have believed. And then I, I always sometimes I ask people, like, what would you say to your former self? I actually want to I want to ask a question that I have not asked before. I, I've been studying the Bible a lot recently. And, you know, the the <laughs> the fall and Adam and Eve and Noah's Ark and a, a lot of other stuff. How could grown adults believe this crap? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually pretty easy. They, they uh, you kind of breaking up on me, so I don't know if I'm talking over you. Uh, are we good? Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm good. I, I'm actually muting when you're speaking just to avoid an echo or something like that. Cool. Um, yeah, it's actually not that surprising. Uh, yeah, you know the. I think the claims of religion are silly. Obviously, a guy rising from the dead, walking on water. But at the same time, people grow up being told that's true, specifically at a time when there's still, as Doug Stanhope says, Santa Claus eligible. And you know, they go to church and they're around people their whole lives who are reinforcing these things. And it's human nature to believe in those things. We take a lot of our beliefs based on who around us is telling them their truth. So I don't think it's all that surprising. Uh, I think it's outlandish, and I'll continue to say so. Hopefully not being a dick, just you know, trying to communicate that as They'd want to communicate to me that Jesus is the one true God. Um, but I think it's understandable that they believe it. Not because it makes sense, but because of the, the nature of their atmosphere. So this next question is very interesting that um, I'm usually very curious. Um, do you think, could a God exist? I mean, have you made up your mind that there is no God? Or could a God exist? Yeah. A God could exist. There's a non-zero chance that a God could exist. But by, I mean, by the same token, there's a non-zero chance that we haven't looked under the right rock to find a leprechaun yet. You know, acknowledging that something is possible isn't necessarily acknowledging that it's plausible. With all of the damage that I, I've seen some of your videos and you, you talk about the negative aspects of religion, you know, it, it can hurt children, it can cost money, it can scare people, it can be a lie. But... Do you think we should maintain religious freedom? And if yes, why? If, you know, if, if religion has these negative effects, why should we maintain religious freedom? Um, because you can't change somebody's mind by force. So you're, you're not really changing their beliefs. In fact, when, we, when societies have tried in the past to change people's minds by force, it winds up in rebellion uh, and reinforcing that belief. You know, you've got to let people make up their own minds. Yeah, I, I certainly would agree with that. Um, 
I mean, how, how, else, how else can you change a mind, really? For a reason and everything. I mean, um, when I first started, I, I I forget if we talked. I mean, I, I basically I went through the motions of of religion, and you know, I believed it for mo- most of my life. But I I would sometimes question certain things, even with someone that believed the same thing. I, you know, if they would talk about a popular one with me is the story of Noah's Ark, and they would talk about how the world was flooded and and the animals and all that, and I would just sometimes question that and say, well, m- maybe it didn't happen quite like that, or maybe it didn't happen at all. Maybe it was a local flood. And whenever I would question anything, a lot of people would get angry and start threatening me and, and start taking offense. And my question is, why, why is that reaction? Like with religious people, if you question their beliefs, why do they get angry and take offense to it? I think it depends on the person uh, of the subset of people that do have that reaction. Now, I've met atheists who get upset when you start questioning what they believe. I think it's just part of human nature. Nobody wants to think they're wrong. And if you've, if you've built a good portion of your worldview and your life around an idea, it's very hard to accept that it could be wrong. And that gets scary. And when people are scared, they react emotionally. Yeah, no, that's, that, that, that's very, it's very interesting. Um, as far as for your, your activism, like what... What um, stereotypes about atheists do you want to confront and correct? Yeah, yeah. In in my eye, well, I think there's only one thing consistent amongst atheists is that uh, they don't believe in God. Yeah. You know, anytime someone says, "Well, if you're an atheist, then you have to," I'm like, "Nope, stop right there. Like, we're done. Like, there's no you have to after that." Uh, but as far as stereotypes go, like. I think we should be honest with one another. Like, if a Christian thinks I'm wrong and thinks me being wrong has tremendous consequence, I want them to tell me. To me, that strikes me as respect. When you, when you assume that if I'm wrong, I wouldn't want to continue being wrong for, for fear of feeling bad or whatnot. Uh, and I try to extend that same courtesy to everybody else, people who don't agree with me, whether it's on politics, religion, or whatnot. Now, it's not to say I just, like, walk up to every you know, random Joe Bob on the street and be like, hey, did you know God doesn't exist? That would make me an asshole. But when, this, when, the, when the conversation comes up, I, I don't want to shy away from it. Uh, so if there's any stereotype I want to go away, it's people who look at it that way who think beliefs have consequences. Beliefs are the gatekeepers of actions. I want the idea that those people are somehow militant or offensive or hateful or necessarily angry to go away. Like, I, I don't want our concern over, over the importance of beliefs to be viewed as a bad thing or as an aggressive thing. Yeah, no, that, that, that's very interesting. I mean, when we talk about, as far as the activism you do, and, you know, I, I guess the news you pay attention to, I, I, I pay attention a lot. I mean, when we talk about the future, do you think things are getting better or worse? Um, it does seem uh-huh. so, sometimes I think better, you know, like there, there's a lot of, you know, I, but, but at the same time, you know, I, I see news about c- countries in the Middle East and East Asia, and it seems like there are millions and millions of intolerant people, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as we approach the future, we acquire new means to power. Um, and power used uh, in the right way it augments the well-being of everybody on the planet. Nuclear reactors to generate electricity increase the well-being of human beings all across the globe. Nuclear weapons probably didn't. So acquiring more power is good. We just have to be really careful about how we use it. But then that's one of the reasons I think questioning religion and all bad beliefs is so important. Uh, If you want to know why I'm an activist atheist, it really has, uh, it was one line in a Sam Harris book. I read that one line. And I switched from being an apathetic atheist to an activist that day. It was, we live in an age when someone can have both the means and the resources, the, the intelligence and the resources to construct a nuclear weapon and still believe he'll receive paradise for detonating it. You know, that's the problem. Um, and and it's, it's like I say in my talks, I think most people have good intentions. But I don't think that's enough. Parents who pray for their child to get better while not calling a doctor because they don't want to piss off God who thinks you know, they, they don't believe in his healing power. Like, they have good intentions. They want their child to get well as much as I would want my child to get well. They love their child as much as I would love my child. The problem isn't their intent. 
It's that they have a bad idea about how the universe works. And once that bad idea got into their head, they wound up doing significant harm to their child. We're a world full of good intentioned people, but we're not necessarily a world full of reasoned people. And I think the only way we secure that going forward to protect ourselves from the power we're acquiring as we move towards the future is to encourage people to be reasonable and not being quiet about it. And doing it until people become so acclimated to it that challenging people's belief isn't seen as a sign of aggression, but a sign of respect and an invitation to teamwork. Okay. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You you kind of brought up um, like the fear of God being pissed off. Did, did you ever deal with a fear of hell or a fear of punishment or pissing off God, as you put it? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it it, 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 affected it affected how much I mastered. You. Sorry, um, I think I wasn't. Uh, and, and it's all the sadder later in my life when I realized that I never had to be. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we might have cut off there, but I think I'm still recording. But no, that that uh, I'm, I kind of heard some of that. Uh, mouth is moving, but I can't hear you. <laughs> uh, no. Sorry, yeah, no, I, I, I think we... Um, I think I might have cut off there, but yeah, that, that that was a funny answer. Yeah, can you repeat that? So you 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 did deal with the fear of hell a little bit? Sure, <laughs> more than a little bit. Uh, like I said, the fear of hell affected uh, my level of masturbation and what I allowed myself to think about while masturbating when I was young. It affected my sex life or lack thereof into my 20s. I was petrified of hell. And like I said, it's even sadder later in life when I realized I didn't have to be. I missed out on doing so many fun things, so many human things, just because I thought God didn't want me to do them. And I wound up uh, hating and loathing people that my preacher told me God, God wanted me to loathe and hate. Like, I was as anti-gay as it got. Oh, wow. uh, and I really regret that. But I'm making up for it now. I've changed way more minds as an atheist than I ever did as a Christian. So, Yeah, no, I mean, and I've heard a lot of people say that, like... Um... You know, Aaron Ra talks about he spent however many, even as much as 30 years wrong and everything. Um, without there being that judgment and, and the afterlife, this is a question I like to ask. Like, obviously, so if, if atheists believe that when you die, you know, you're dead and that's it, right? Arguably, someone could commit a crime and get away with it. You know, um, I, I like to use the example of D.B. Cooper. I assume you remember who he is you know he, he's the, plane, the robber on the airplane and you know the the zodiac killer who was never caught you know if there's no punishment in the afterlife then these guys are just gonna get away with it you know what i mean so the question is would it be better if there was some type of if there was a hell or if there was some type of punishment in the afterlife you know even if it was a more appropriate punishment um guy it, it all depends on how you define your terms certainly not a a hell where people burn forever. Like, I can't think of very many people who deserve that, um, especially for the finite transgressions described in the Bible. Uh, I don't think having sex before the proper ceremony has taken place merits eternal burning. I, I think that's a little bit of an overstep. Um, but do I wish there was some kind of cosmic accountability where everybody who is an asshole to someone else received an appropriate punishment? Sure. I mean, if humans could arrange that just by ourselves, we'd do it, obviously. Um, but wanting it to be so doesn't necessarily make it so. And then this is what religious people say at the time. Like, wouldn't it be great if there was a God? Well, like, no, not your God. That would actually be terrible. But, yeah, wanting something to be, like, I, I wish I played in the NBA and was seven tall and a multimillionaire. But as it stands, I'm a blogger and 5'8". <laughs> When people talk about their high moral character, um, a lot of times people will say, you know, I do the right thing because of the Bible or I, you know, I'm, I'm going to wait um, to have sex until marriage because of the Bible or, you know, I mean, you, have you heard of stuff like this? Sure. Now, why would someone say that? Because obviously the Bible, I mean, you know, we could take a Bible and look at all the terrible things in it. Why do people equate their high moral character with the Bible? Oh, society tells them to, for one thing, for the same reason they you know, believe Jesus rose from the dead. It's reinforced in society. Uh, and the idea that if you abide by the Bible, you're a good person is also reinforced. So it, it, it's really easy to fall into believing that if you haven't spent a lot of time to think independently about it. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really blame people. Uh, but as far as moral character being drawn from the Bible, 
mean, it's, it's awesome, awesome you want, want to do the right thing. thing. That's, That's cool. cool. We can always have the talk about what the right thing is, but I'm glad we can start with the desire to do the right thing. Um, but I find that even religious people uh, draw what is right from their conscience, at least to an extent. I mean, even if a religious person reads something like Exodus 35 too, that says, kill people for working on Saturday, which is the biblical Sabbath, they don't do it. Like, they read that and they're like, oh, that's terrible. That's awful. No, I would never do that. So even reading the Bible, they're still deferring to their own moral judgment when they read passages like that. You know, I just wish they could realize that even, even for the good stuff and even for everything else, they're still, uh, they're still deferring to their conscience when they decide right from wrong. Yeah, no, that, that, that's good. I mean, it, it kind of leads to another question. I was going to say, do you think a lot of religious people are well-intended? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But that, um, I think even the, some of the theocratic Islamic suicide bombers are well-intended. Uh, that's the thing. Like, good intentions combined with bad beliefs can still have the same outcome as malice. When you hear about people who understand science very well, I, I like to use the example of a Ken Miller, um, you know, the professor. And when you hear about these people, you know, who, who understand science very well and who, who know all that there is to know about evolution and seem to understand astronomy, and they still are very religious, um, <laughs> does that you know, does, do you have any feelings that, does it bother you? Does it, I mean, you know, do you have any thoughts on that? You know, I understand that the human brain can be partitioned pretty, pretty effectively, obviously. You know, a, a, a physicist can go into the lab one day believing that the surface tension of water cannot support a human being and run experiments along that and report the experiments as truth and go to church the next day and believe a guy walked on water. Um, it confuses me. Uh, it boggles me. Like, I know there's reinforcement going on there, which, which can taint a person's judgment. Uh, but I, I think it's just sad because you, you know, you've got these brains that can clearly operate well in that, that environment. They clearly understand that the universe operates under a set of rules. The set of rules can be used to test things and to find out what's true. And they're capable of just throwing it all away for a day. I mean, but this is the power of indoctrination, right? <laughs> Do we choose what we believe? No. How, 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 do we, how do we go about believing? Well, and this is what kills me about the line, you have to choose to believe in Jesus, because if God exists, he created us with a brain I don't think can choose what we believe. Um, your, your brain's this engine that generates beliefs based on what facts are rattling around inside, and you're really powerless to do anything else. Uh, if you want to test it, you can march to the edge of a skyscraper and try to convince yourself by force of will that gravity doesn't work. Like you couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Our minds are already made up for us on that, and we can't just choose to believe otherwise, which is why I think it's downright cruel and homicidal if a god made me with a brain incapable of choosing what I believe through force of will and said that the barrier to heaven is not being a good, kind, compassionate person who's put in the study of religion and science to try and figure out what's true about the world, but just my ability to believe an absurd story like someone rising from the dead. And th th this is a God that's trying to open up doorways into hell, not shut them. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you have friends that are religious? It, 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 is that an issue? I mean, Sure. One of my groomsmen was a, uh, or is a music minister at a church. Uh, my favorite singer in the entire world is a Christian singer. Um, I teach voice lessons at a high school. Uh, the two teachers who work with me there, who are two of my favorite people in the world, are both Christian. Like, Christians aren't bad people. And I, I, it's so unfortunate because there seems to be this idea amongst a lot of people that if we disagree on religion and if we express that disagreement, we're somehow challenging the worth or the value of the other person when we're not. In fact, I think it's an expression of how much you value them that you assume if, again, if, if uh, you assume that if you think they're wrong, they'd want to know. But no, Christians aren't bad people. Like, for, well, I take it back. Some people are bad. Some people are good. Religious beliefs can make good people bad. But there are plenty of good religious people in the world. That's right. That you know that that, that I mean, as far as with the topic of science, um, I guess does does science lead to atheism? I mean, does like or should science lead to atheism? I mean, was it 
what role did science have for your atheism? Like what percentage? I mean, was it lack of belief in the biblical story and lack of seeing the evidence in science? You know what I mean? I first started moving away from religion when I had my first read through of the Bible. Uh, I literally finished the Bible and was like, man, I, I don't really believe any of this. Um, and science didn't help me with that. You know, I, I, I didn't need a physics class to help me to understand that you know, a, a God that says kill gay people uh, probably isn't a God of love, love uh, or, a, or, a, or that a guy didn't walk on water and rise from the dead. Uh, we need more evidence than someone in you know, the Bronze Age writing it down in a book. I need more evidence than that. Um, but what, what science did do is it reaffirmed my love and wonder for the world uh, in place of religion. Um, I remember in high school, I've, I've always been an astronomy nut. I, like, I, I love astronomy, I love space. Uh, and I'm from a little town in nowhere, Arkansas. And I remember spending summer nights out in the backyard uh, just looking up at the sky and looking up at the stars and thinking to myself, like, this is what God did. And to an extent, I was feeling like I was communicating with God by experiencing his handiwork. Like, I knew scientists tried to understand it, but they were just understanding the mechanisms God put in place to make it so. And it, was, it did fill me with this sense of awe, and it was wondrous. Um, and then I went to college and took my first several astronomy courses and came back. And laying in the same place, looking at the same stars, I saw the genes instability. I, I saw the vastness of the universe in terms of logarithmic functions. And it was even more beautiful to me. Uh, and that's when I really uh, developed my affinity for understanding how the universe actually works, uh, which filled me with a sense of awe and place of religion that I really needed. So I, I guess you can kind of say it helped solidify my atheism, but it didn't help turn me away from religion. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you bring up your, your astronomy class. I, I had a similar, I had an astronomy professor that would tell you that knew everything about it, but he still went to Christian church and I would pull him aside and he, you know, he had his kind of way of, I don't want to say rationalizing it, but just being okay with it. Well, you know, this is what happened, but the Bible is stories to teach us and I don't know. Um, I, I did a debate once at the University of Kansas against a, 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 a physicist who worked with CERN on the particle collider over the subject of is Christianity compatible with science? Uh, and I don't think it's too presumptuous for me to say I, I won the debate very, very handily. Not because I was smarter than him. I said, God, no, absolutely not. Not even close. Just because it, that side is so indefensible. But yeah, it, it boggles me that people with that type of just towering intellect can, can abandon what they know to be true to believe something else. Because I mean, this, this guy knows people don't rise from the dead. He, he knows how the surface tension of water works. Yeah. Just. How do we, because basically it comes down to when we talk about how did the world and what happened and, you know, how did the Big Bang happen? Did the Big Bang happen? What happened before? How did it happen? Why did it happen? How do we be comfortable with, like, are, are you comfortable with the answer, I don't know? And how do we be comfortable with that? Um, I'm, I'm comfortable with, this, with the answer, I don't know, in terms of myself. For the simple reason being, we don't live long enough to become experts on everything. Like, I can, I can ride on an airplane without understanding how the physics work. Like, I understand how the Bernoulli principle works, but, but that's about it. I understand lift on wings. But that's about it. But it's okay. I don't have to understand it. Just someone does. Uh, and where I, where I say I don't know, I can defer to the experts. That's how you create a, a cohesive worldview. Uh, every time I bite into a cheeseburger, I'm deferring to people who understand uh, biology and bacteria. Um, you know, I, 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 am, I, I, am, I am an expert in some things. We all are. But for everything else, I just defer to experts. But as a society, am I, am I, can I accept I don't know? Well, when it's true, yes, we have to accept it. We shouldn't make up things where we don't know things. And this is what religious people try to do all the time. We don't know how X happened, therefore it must be God. Like, you, you can't just fill that in with any explanation you want. I don't know stands until someone has evidence. Um, but I'm not so okay with it that I'm okay with the stopping looking. No, we have to keep looking. We have to keep answering questions. And this is how society thrives based on the degree to which we purge ignorance uh, from, from the pantheon of human knowledge. The more we know, the happier we are. 
mean, there, there was a time when you, you know, people were starving, we were hungry, food was scarce, and people prayed for food and it didn't work. So we invented new ways to hunt, new ways to farm. There was a time when people were sick, we prayed for them to get well, it didn't work, so we came up with new me medical techniques. You know, every new invention increases human well-being. And so, yeah, we have to keep looking, not just because we're curious, but because our survival depends on it, our happiness depends on it. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, um, certainly that is, uh, I, I've been studying kind of the history of the human race, you know, for, um, how should we react to gaps? You know, you, you kind of talked about gaps before, um, you know, someone, you know, we, we don't know, so they insert God. I mean, how, how would you react to a, to a gap? Um, well, obviously say, I don't know. Yeah, no idea whatsoever. Yeah, but, but we'll work on it. We'll find out. Um, there's this idea, though, that, you know, when you call yourself a Christian or an atheist, you are making an assertion about how future I don't knows will be resolved. Um, so if I'm saying an atheist, you know, I'm saying that for everything we explain in the future, there's going to be a natural explanation. And it's really easy for me to do that. Literally everything we've ever explained, all of it, has been found to be mindless forces acting upon inanimate objects. All of it. I mean, there was literally a time we had to explain anything. And since then, everything we've explained has had that answer. It's like saying, you know, two boxers have fought millions upon millions of fights, and one boxer has won every three fight. And you have to bet on the next time they fight, the next thing we discover. What are you going to bet on? Well, I mean, an idiot bets on the one that's lost every time. So it's really easy for me to make that assumption. Now, if I'm ever shown to be wrong, I'll change my mind. I mean, that's what smart people do. We, we change our minds as new evidence comes in. Every time you hear a Christian say, like, oh, Christianity is true, it's never changed, that's a reason not to believe it. That's just saying you're stuck yeah. and you're never changing your mind as new evidence comes into the equation. So, yeah, if we ever find a supernatural explanation for something or confirm it, I'm down. I, I just, I, I care about what's true. And so far, supernatural religion, that hasn't been it. I mean, it, what, was, what does Sam Harris say? You know, it should be easy to think of something for which we once had a religious explanation, for, but for now we have a scientific explanation. Tons of things. But can you think of a single thing for which, for which we once had a scientific explanation that was replaced by a religious explanation? No, absolutely not. Does it matter that Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, does it matter that they were atheists? Well, if you're arguing with someone who's making the claim that atheism makes people moral, which I've never seen anybody do, uh, then yeah, it would matter then, because obviously those guys were atheists and they were terrible human beings. Uh, but it turns out bad ideas don't just have to be religious. I mean, bad ideas that corrupt people and cause them to do sick, evil shit don't have to be religious. They can be political. Uh, a person can be a psychopath, greedy. As like Richard Dawkins says, they also all had mustaches. Like, but you know, who, who thinks that has anything to do with killing people? You know, they all killed for political reasons. Like, none of them were like, oh, I hate religion. I'm going to go kill a bunch of people. And if they, even if they did, even if somewhere there was someone like that, you know, pretty much every atheist on earth would be like, what the? Mm -hmm. No, stop, fuck you. Uh, whereas there's been plenty of religious people who have said, you know, I'm going to kill you because you are, you are, your views are offensive to my religion. You are offensive to my religion. Um, and enough religious people didn't go, wait a minute, that's sick, evil shit. Enough religious people said, well, does God command it? Well, okay, if God commands it. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know that, that. That's true. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's not. If. A loving God existed, and if it just so happened to turn out, right, that when we die, you know, a loving God exists who cares about us, and we happen to go to a heaven, and we can see our family again, and we can see all our friends that died, and we can live forever in a happy, comfortable environment, would that be good? It depends, it depends on the on circumstances, circumstances, I guess. Yeah. Um, um, sure, yeah, I, I'd love I'd to live, live forever. forever. I'd love I'd to love see... I love, I love to be reunited with everybody I love in life. That would be fantastic. Um, does it come at the expense of having to be able to look down in hell and see people suffering for all of eternity for minuscule transgressions? Uh, in that case, no, I'd rather die. Um, does it have to do uh, with the loss of my free will and having to bow and scrape to God from now until the end of time? Uh, if so, no, I'd rather die. So I guess it depends on the heaven. Yeah, it depends on the situation. Um, should churches have to pay taxes on, on like, the, the money that they get in the pews and stuff like that? 
Um, honestly, in, in my eyes, it depends. Church being separate for the gov from the government is a beautiful idea. The separation of church and state is one of it, probably the the most freedom friendly philosophy that was ever conceived in my eyes. Um, and, and it sucks that Christians forget this because we we fought a war to be free from the Church of England, so they wouldn't have a state church that made them worship some way they didn't want to worship. You know, now that they're in charge, they want the state church again. Uh, uh, but um, mm, should they have to pay taxes? If you want to play politics, like if you want to be involved in politics, you want to be a part of the government, then you have to pay to play. You can't be separate while also being involved. It doesn't work that way. But if you're willing to stay separate and just do your thing as a church and stay the, stay the fuck out of politics, no, you shouldn't have to pay taxes as a church. Yeah, and I think someone else said that we, we should be able to analyze how much is going to a charitable cause, but a lot of atheists, I think Hitchens was big on churches having to pay taxes and everything. Um, well, the thing, like, there's a lot of churches that are violating those rules right now that are playing politics, and was the IRS audits one or two churches a year? Like, yeah. And they're flagrantly doing it. There's literally churches sending the IRS letters saying, we're breaking the rules, we're playing politics, and daring them to audit them, and they don't do it, and they need to. The second, like, Believe me, church, churches are well aware of how much money they make and how much money they need to keep going. And once they see a few churches losing their tax-exempt status, that shit's going to dry up real quick. And, you know, a, a revelation is going to come down from God that it's time to quit playing politics. Uh, but our government needs to do it. That's the problem. The rules aren't being enforced. I often think of the transition that is made by myself and by, by others. You know, you mentioned you being starting out as, as Christian and... I wonder if there was an early time, if there was like a first day that I started wondering. And so let's say there's someone who's just starting out, say that, you know, they, they were going to church their whole life and they never questioned and, and say this is their first week questioning. What would be your advice for them? Is there a book they should read? Is there something they should do? Um, Sam Harris's Letter to a Christian Nation, The End of Faith are beautifully written, easily acceptable to, are easily accessible to most people. I, I really like those. Uh, I don't know. I, I think if you're really looking, you'll find good material. So if it were someone who's their first week of questioning, I, if it were me, I'd first try to establish the primacy of figuring out what is true. Like, I, I'd really put the burden on them. Like, why, why is what's true matter? Not just because you want to know what's true, but like, look at all the ways the truth affects the world in comparison to lies. Like, th this is important. It, it's not just something you read. It's something you need to put a lot of effort into and, and treat with the highest care. Um, yeah, it wouldn't even be a particular argument I'd put in their head. I'd just put that concern. In the nation of Tajikistan, I, I forget if I emailed you about this, but they there was an interesting situation. Now, they deal with some Islamic fundamentalism and terrorism. And what they started to do was they started to restrict the ability to display religious symbols. And I think even in schools up until I think eighth grade or ninth grade, they said no, no religion in school, you know, don't bring a Quran, uh, you know, and I think that as Americans, we would disagree with that here. But in all sincerity, just what they were dealing with, in my opinion, I think it made sense there. Do you have any feelings on that? <laughs> um, I would probably need more details. Like, it, it sucks to think of ends justify the means thinking. Um, but, yeah, it, it would just depend on how terrible the situation is. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a good idea to keep religion out of schools entirely. Everybody's religion. I think it's a good idea to keep atheism out of schools entirely. You know, fuck, schools for learning. Um, so I, I think that's a good step in and of itself. I'm not sure I'm, I'm down with, you know, decreasing someone's autonomy to wear a symbol of their religion or carry their holy book with them if they want, but certainly no official religion. Um, God, you know, I think morality has to do with what achieves the, the most good possible. Like there's some situations where there's, there's no good solution. There's only a, a least miserable solution. 
you know, for, for instance, if, if your options are stealing or someone starving to death, like in a hypothetical world, those are your two options. You know, I'm opposed to stealing, but in this hypothetical situation, the moral thing to do is to steal, you know, to save the life. Um, so in this situation, if religious extremism is extremely high and there's a reason to believe that, you know, curtailing it, uh, curtailing the expression of it would help, yeah, I'm not sure I'm convinced of that. So, but if, if there are a good reason to believe it, you know, it, as much as it goes against, you know, my, my personal morality in that situation to protect people, I'd say do it. So it, it's really hard. I need to know more details. Yeah, it's, it's a tough call. I mean, I think they deal with suicide bombing. I think they were worried about suicide bombing. Um, it's not a country that's in the news a lot, but... Um, is yeah. there a that prohibiting religious symbols in school will stop that suicide bombing or slow it down? If so... Maybe, uh, but I don't, like, no, I, I think the more to do it. What's interesting, and maybe I'll send you, I think they even said they don't want kids going to mosque until 13, until the age of 13 or something. So I think they were even trying to prohibit it. And I know that I wouldn't want to do that here, but it might have made sense there, you know. I don't you know. know. I don't know. I don't it know. seems it's like, it's like if you don't, don't want kids being required, required to go to mosque before they're 13, you can't, you can't prohibit, prohibit them from going. going. You know, turnabout's fair play there. It's very interesting. Atheists seem to be a lot more tolerant of... Atheists are much more tolerant of... of they're more tolerant of religion than religion is of it. You know, I've, oh, yeah. ne I've never met... A, I, I'm trying to think if I've ever met... I'm never an activist, but if I've ever met an atheist that says, like, there shouldn't be a religion or you shouldn't be able to go, I, I, I just... You know, you shouldn't be able to go to church. Like, I've never... Why do you think made, that is? It like, made Christianity a minority religion. And they will recognize the value of church and state separation really fucking quick. <laughs> um, does atheism lead to liberalism? Um, I, I think there's plenty of evidence to suggest that it certainly nudges people towards liberalism. I mean, you know, <laughs> look, look at the position of both atheists on something like gay rights, you know, yeah. which always kills me. Like when, when you know, the the the. Christians who don't have a problem with gay people. It's like, it's not all Christians. Like, yes, we know, but of the people who are, who are against gay rights, virtually 100% of them are Christians. Like, it, it's easy to see that, you know, Christianity is the driving force there. Whereas, can you compare to atheists, you know, what is like 82% of us are for gay rights? So, yeah, it certainly nudges us in that direction. Yeah, that, that, believe it or not, Teresa McBain said no, but um, it's, it, 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 I, I think so. Um, as we discussed before, I, I live in New Jersey, and we actually had a situation a couple years ago where um, prostitutes, well, I think it was 2006, 2007, um, women working as prostitutes were being murdered at, actually quite frequently and very unfortunately. And there is talk of, you know, we, we have gambling and we, we have a couple of other vices legalized and, you know, we tax it and everything. There was talk of legalizing that you know, making it legal and ha having it be maybe regulated so that we could protect the women involved and charge a sales tax as opposed to, you know, having to bear the cost of court and jail. Um, was it, you know, it, more of a, that, uh, George, was it selling's legal? Fucking's legal. Why isn't selling fucking legal? How is it illegal to sell something <laughs> perfectly all right to give away? But what happened was the the religious right, you know, certainly rose up and, you know, did what I'm sure you already know they did. You know, they talk about how it, it, it having you know, fun it's with against God marriage. and everything. Like, what's your what's your thoughts on that? Like on prostitution? Oh, oh well, legalize it. Yeah. Legalize it. You put laws in place to keep people safe. Yeah. Like, yeah. How is, how is it illegal to do something that you're free to do? That's so stupid. <laughs> Yeah, it's been. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I really appreciate you know you you taking the time. I'm, you know, it's 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 cool to meet you and have a personal conversation. I've certainly been watching your videos. I mean, uh, along with many others for a couple years. Um, I That's usually fine. end the like. Do, did you have any questions you wanted to ask me? No, I'm just. Thanks for, having me. Thanks for having me aboard. It was a hoot. You ask really good questions and you stay out of the interview ease way. I appreciate that. You got a really good show. That's great. Yeah, th thanks. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the video here. But you, you remember, I I wanted to do one more thing with you, so don't don't go away. But yeah, it, it is uh, good to be back on. Yeah, I I'm sorry to my viewers. I know there's been a little bit of a gap, but um, it's uh, it, it's cool to be back. And uh, this is JT 